Urban Legends 2007 Close Calls The world is full of urban legends, remarkable stories that spread like viruses around the planet, mutilating and evolving, till one woman can remember which ones are true and which ones are the urban legends. In this episode called Close Calls, we show you three stories, all linked by near misses. First up, UK police desperately try to face with a dangerous killer on the loose. So he faced with a killer on the loose. Next is the story of a Croatian man with a habit for near-death experiences. He's amazingly cursed or unlucky, incredibly lucky and finally unhappy. Dutch couple finds a surprising way to inject some vim back into marriage. Watch all three stories to decide which urban legends are true and which are fault ones are false. Why not if you guess right at the end of the show? First is a story called The Faceless Woman. Detective Frank Andrews knows the importance of not letting cases get to him. Not even Frank could get could avoid becoming consumed by one strange and violent crime spree. Frank Andrews, I was so obsessed I had to see it through. Frank became involved with a case back in 1902 in Reading, England, when a young woman was brutally murdered. Two wine glasses left on her table on the best hope for evidence. We took these cl- to check for saliva gra- glass and also a good surface for things like fingerprints. There are no sort of usable, no usable prints, but one glass t- does yield a DNA sample. Frank cross references it. And incredibly, it matches DNA from four uns- other unsolved crimes, including another murder. Even more shocking, the D- I- DNA profile is that of a woman. She occurs as almost exclusively male. Respect, this was a very unusual case. Please find it hard to believe that some, the same woman's DNA sh- turns out as more crime scenes. Reader really picks up the story and gives the very raging, raging Brain pension criminal name. She's never been seen. That was the reason that the phrase was coined. The face is woman, woman. Six months after the first murder, the pressure is mounting. Or Frank for the results. For another murder, four weeks later, takes things to a new disturbing level. He was attacked and killed. He found blood and skin fragments on his nails. Not only did we find the DNA that matched the face's woman, we also found the DNA that matched the unknown male. This fact is that she reunited and this meant she recruited an accomplice. It's Frank's first solid break as he jumps on it. They're determined to find out the identity of these roofs faced women for a new for, for a new partner. We did have find a compass, we've brought him in, questioned him vigorously, he refused to give up the identity of the failed woman, in fact he denied having an accomplice, it's no use, he was charged and sentenced, but in terms of faceless woman, back square one, was absolutely gutted, I really thought that this was, a, this, it was it, this was it, we were actually going to finally close the case, only ten days later, days later the faceless woman makes another appearance, this time a baffling twist, we had an undentified male deceased. We had an undentified male deceased. Following normal procedure, oh, we took an oral swab. Oh, needles to say, we were absolutely amazed to find an unfaithful woman. DNA have a male, for male corpse. But no way this could have happened. Frank doesn't know what to make of it. Until a single sensation occurs to him, he may have been overlooking the office. Frank Andrews. The DNA kits have been used all the same by a medical supply company located in Birmingham. Everything happened suggests that someone had been tampering with the DNA kits. DNA samples from a medical supply company turns out to be a, a match. Fingers tracked down his long time memories of a hair that faces woman, Miss Millie, Millie, Millie for Harris, a 59 year old lab worker, obviously no serial killer. He reserved her for a couple of days to find out if this was malicious tampering or accidental. Finally, Frank got his answer. This bizarre, complex mystery was ridiculous, simple solution. DNA kits contain cotton swabs were used to gather evidence. Most of the swabs were very uniform, but occasionally it would be a little bit ragged. And this one woman, in order to keep them uniform, would lick her fingers and press them back into shape. 
therefore contaminating these samples with her DNA. We have all overwhelming link. Miss Millie unwittingly had the police chasing her own tails. It goes to show you can never be sure of anything. That's what's funny of you. A police ball spends nine months hunting a serial killer. I discover the criminal is an innocent woman. Did this really happen? If you have to wait till the end of the show to find out. But then, then before then, check out this mini myth. Mini myth number one four two two. That quotes that code me. It's Columbus Olo Coat Store. Linda Brown shouted, "Hey everyone, coats on me! I won the lottery. Five hundred lucky people, lucky people swarmed the ranks, desperate to get their share. And then the left in stretch limo to get the cash to pay. But lo and behold, much to the changing of the waiting hall, hold it was a huge prank." A riot broke out and the police tried to sell, steal the coats. A riot broke out as the people tried to steal the coats. They believed they were due. But Linda had a beat a single safe retreat. But did it happen? They discovered the truth roof after the break. Welcome back to Open Nation. For the break, we told you about a woman who offered up the white coats for everyone's store. It took off about paying, causing a riot. Was it true or wrapped in a coat of lies? It was absolutely true. Joke so was Linda when she arrested for causing the riot and not paying the nine uh, hundred limo bill, dollar limo bill. Oh no, the legends! We show you true three stories. Decide which one really happened, which one were really, merely legends. So far, you've been seeing the tale of the confounding crime spree, trying to be the case of contaminated DNA swabs. Was it true or false? Find out at the end of the show. It's time for our next story. It's called Lucky Man. Frank Selleck loves to entertain, but the biggest crowd pleaser isn't his music. It's called the story of life. In fact, Frank, oh, maybe the luckiest man who's ever lived. Franco's story begins in Colombia, called Gracia, in 1958. He's a teacher on a school trip. I was dropping off the kids, Frank, Franco, and the driver, head out for lunch. Suddenly the driver loses the control, the cry for it crash. Would have killed most people, but somehow Franco survives. But God was planning for Franco is far stranger than you'd ever imagined. Three years later, his brush for death is a distant memory. Franco is on a tr- long train ride. Train derails and plunges to icy water. A train cars car stink sink. Seventeen patients die, but like this first crash, Franco escapes without a scratch. Franco. When I had to wait far long to find out, a year later, Frank was avoiding buses and trains. But he can't risk the latest form of transformation. It is his very first flight. He determined to take advantage of it, the first ever luxury of his, of his ever last luxury. Frank practices his creation charm on the flight attendant. Suddenly, unbelievable happens. For it crashes, Franco is stuck from the plane. Be free, falling out of parachute. Surely it's the end of Franco. But something amazing happens. The sage tech breaks his 200 foot, 2000 foot fall. Once again, for incredible luck, has saved Franco's life. After not escaping death for a third time, Franco thinks God must be playing games with him. But he's wrong. On 5th of June, 2002, two days after his, after his 20, 30, 73rd birthday, fate finally catches up Franco. Lifetime and near misses about to be change. If Franco stops to check his lotto ticket, he had no idea what about to hit him. Finally, Franco's luck has done more, has done more than save him from death. After bad luck with planes, trains, and buses, and only one form of transportation, truly trusts, man survives three crazy accidents only to win the lottery. But it's true, but they wait until the end of the show to find out. Then check out this mini myth. Mini myth number 5761. Lottery ticket. Jim Morgan's did call. I had caused the celebration drink. He realised he bought the winning ticket. His fellow bar on Petrosians responded with disbelief, forcing him to pass it around so they could see it for themselves. The ticket went from hand to hand around the bar set. When they arrived to Jim, it was a completely different ticket. One of the men's friends swapped, swapped the winning ticket. 
But the women took it, cashed it anonymously, to disappear the winnings. So it's true. Well, let's get back, well, you know, after the break. Welcome back to the Urban Legends after the break. We show, we showed you a mini myth of the guy who passed around his daughter when he locked it ticket. And he lose it as fast as he won it. Do you think this tale is a winning ticket? The fact, this, this story is in fact a fake. No, one which is particularly popular in China. I know urban legends. Your mission is t- t- totally true for the fascinating false. So far, you've been the leaked. Seen the leaked. Seen the tale of Frank Andrews spent nine months hanging, hunting a hardened criminal. I discovered he's chasing a combatant, contaminated DNA swabs. The story of Frank Selleck has survived three accidents during, against all odds and then won the lotto. Which ones are true, real, and which ones are fake? Oh, it will be revealed at the end of the show. In the meantime, watch our final story. We named it Twisted Taste. Goethe von Dijk knows how quickly relationships can grow stale. She would never imagine what would ultimately happen to a marriage. It would leave her changed forever. Back in 1995, Jukabup and Greta von Dijk had been married for 12 years. But things aren't what once were. To make matters worse, the von Dink's of fresh French issues. Gretchen assures the worst. Seems the worst. It was really in her reality. Jacob is taken to spending all their money on something else prostitutes. Jacob? Is careful to conceal his secret for his wife, but ignorance is far from blissful Greta. Greta decides it's time for a change. He finds himself a part time job and it says out of town. Meanwhile, Jacob's addition is taking over his life. A couple drifting further and further apart. There's all about change. One fateful evening, Jacob decides it's time to try to a new bottle. Now, Greta's new job is the oldest profession in the world. How will they get past this? On the very that day, every week, Jacob and Rita we like their fine and comfort of brothel. It's not over, not come either of them. It's not come either of them could predict have predicted lying and cheating, two things that normally destroy a relationship. Greta and Jacob is an incredible ingredient that saved their marriage. Why? Why? But did it really happen? We'll let you know after the break. Welcome back to Urban Legends. Time to reveal the truth about the three incredible stories. First up, the story of Frank Andrews, who is the lead of a wild police goose chase by some contaminated DNA swabs. Well, it, but is it a fact or fiction? Frank Andrews, a credible story and totally bogus. I'm not a copper, I'm an actor. And a familiar similar story happened in Europe over a span of 15 years. We never saw or found out how the swabs were contaminated. Next, it's late. It's the tale Frank Silek, the luckiest man in the world, fronted death three times and won a lottery. But did it happen? This story is totally true. Which leaves the story of Greta von Dijk and the unbelievable coincidence of running into her husband, Buffel, where she really secretly worked. The true prosecution permitted in Holland. That's only part of the story which is true. I'm a school teacher. The story is fascinatingly fake. A version of this has been circulating on the internet since 2001. That's the end of this episode called Close Calls. Were you able to separate the righteously right from the ridiculously wrong? Don't worry. If you couldn't, you get another chance to se- separate fact and fiction. An exit storm, urban legends.